to Tennessee's At Home Learning Series for Literacy. Today's lesson is for all our fourth graders out there, though all children are welcome to tune in. This lesson is the third in, in this week's series, Lesson 8. My name is Valencia Smith, and I'm a fourth grade teacher at Nina Stewart Elementary in Gallatin, Tennessee. I'm so excited to be your teacher for this lesson. Welcome to my virtual classroom. If you didn't see our previous lessons, you can find them at www.tn.gov backslash education. You can still tune into today's lesson if you haven't seen any of our others. But it might be more fun if you first go back and watch our other lessons since we'll be talking about things we learned previously. We will do a quick review of yesterday's lesson in this section. Today, we will be reading the third part of a legend set post or after the Revolutionary War. Our lesson focus for today is to describe the events using details from the text, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. In your independent practice, you will write an explanatory paragraph to describe how the author describes the events in the third part of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Before we get started, to participate fully in today's lesson, you will need three pieces of paper, a pencil, a surface to write on. And you will also need the student packet for ELA Grade 4 Lesson 8, which can be found at www.tn.gov backslash education. Okay, let's begin. Remember in the previous two lessons, we have been discussing what makes a story a legend. My chart is behind me. A legend usually focuses on heroic individuals or fantastic creatures and describes an exciting adventure. It may have some basis in historical fact and include some supernatural events. A legend usually focuses on heroic individuals or fantastic creatures and describes an exciting event. So far, we can identify the story as a legend because it is based on some historical fact. It is set during the Revolutionary War time period. Remember, that is the war between the American colonists that started in 1775. Also, the story has some supernatural elements because there have been mention of haunting noises, ghosts, and witches. Today, we will continue our look at how the author uses words and phrases to describe the events. I will talk about how to use the words the author uses to think about the events. Then, there will be time for you to practice writing about the events on your own with my support. Finally, I will assign you independent work that you can complete after the video ends. This framework will follow the same structure as week one lessons. As a quick review of our story so far, let's remember that we dis what we discussed about the setting in the first lesson. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is set among the hills beyond Terrytown. There is a legend in the town about a soldier who lost his head during the Revolutionary War and roams the hollows at night looking for his head. Together, in our last lesson, we started writing an explanatory paragraph about the characters that you were to complete. I finished my paragraph. For those of you who weren't able to join us, it will catch you up on the characters. For those of you who have your paragraph, think about how yours is similar to mine or different. Here's what I wrote. The legend, in The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, as retold by Kim Griswell, the author presents two main characters, Ichabod Crane and Brum Jump Bones. Ichabod Crane is a thin scarecrow of a man with a tiny head and a spindly neck. The author says his ears are as big as saucers. Ichabod is a strict teacher who is also known to be a gossip. When riding his horse alone at twilight, he was so scared of the shadows that he raced to his attic and locked the attic room and locked the door. In contrast, Brum Bones is, is an athletic gentleman who has Herculean strength and only loves two things his horse Daredevil, and, and Katrina Van Tassel. Others see him as the most eligible bachelor, a prankster, and not very smart. In fact, Ichabod compares Brom's brain to a pea. 
These two characters appear to be very different and should make for some exciting events in the story. Take a moment. How is yours the same or different from mine? <clears throat> After reading mine aloud, as always, I think I can make it better. Good writers are always trying to make their writing better. I think I could improve it if I gave some actual words the author uses to describe Brum like no writer could catch him. Because the author has started the story with details about the setting and characters, during our reading today, we will capture information about events in the story based on the words of the author. This will help us describe the events at the end of this lesson. We want to think about what we have about what we know about the events by the details the author provides us. Go ahead and write events at the top of one sheet of paper. We will use these as we read the story. Let's begin. We left off yesterday when Ichabod learned about Brum Bones' only two loves were his horse and Katrina. Washington Irvin's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow as retold by Kim T. Griswell, Part 3. Ichabod Crane's saucer ears perked up, yet his shoulders sagged. Katrina Van Tassel? So Brum, Brum, Brum Bones has set his sights on Heer Van Tassel's daughter, too? The young lady had already caught the teacher's eye, as had her father's estates. Van Tassel's land rolls from the banks of the Hudson all the way to Sleepy Hollow. One day, they would all belong to Katrina. And so Katrina, Ichabod mused, should belong to a cautious and learned man, a man such as himself, not to the foolish Brum Bones. <clears throat> I shall woo her quietly, Ichabod decided. No need to battle the brute for her hand. I will win her with song. Uh-oh, I hear trouble brewing. Let's talk about what happened in the first part. Ichabod Crane's saucer ears perked up, yet his shoulders sagged. What does it tell us about Ichabod that his shoulders sagged? I can infer or use what I know with what the text says to determine that maybe he is a little defeated. When I feel defeated, my shoulders sag. Maybe he feels like he can't compare to Brum Bones. Have you heard the expre expression, set your sights on someone? That means you like them. So the text says setting sights on Katrina. Let me reread. Katrina Van Tassel? So Brum Bones has set his sights on Heer Van Tassel's daughter too. The young lady had already caught the teacher's eye, as had her father's estates. What did you hear? Who likes Katrina? Why? Right, Ichabod and Brum both like Katrina. Did you catch a reason why Katrina caught Ichabod's eye? Ichabod likes her father's estates, which means all the land he owns. Listen again as we hear Ichabod's thoughts about Katrina's father's estates or lands. Van Tassel's lands rolled from the banks of the Hudson all the way to Sleepy Hollow. One day, they would all belong to Katrina. And so Katrina, Ichabod mused, should belong to a cautious and learned or educated man. A man such as himself. Not to the foolish Brum Bones. What does that tell you about Ichabod? Yes, he thinks all the land should belong to him, not Brum, who is foolish. Now, how is he going to get that land? What can you infer? Remember to use what you know with what the text says. I can infer that he thinks he can get the land by getting Katrina, because I know that sometimes people refer to their belongings to someone as marriage, and in, in marriage, and in marriage, you share what you have. Ichabod thinks if he marries Katrina, he will get the land. This is an important event in the story. Ichabod realizes Brum wants Katrina too. 
We need to add that to our events chart. <clears throat> so you go ahead and write it down that I already have it here. Be sure you are writing this on your paper. I'm going to add a few notes for myself so when I try to describe, I have something from which to work. I'm going to add bullet points. Wanted father's land and thought and thought would get by marrying her. Now, let's see what Ichabod does. The school teacher took great pride in his voice. So the very next Sunday, he hurried to church, choosing a spot close to the Van Tussle family. The school teacher took out his songbook, cleared his throat, <clears throat> and began to sing. Swallows, a kind of bird, burst from the rafters. Mice squeezed out of the knot holes and fled into the fields. The vain Mr. Crane never noticed. All he saw was Katrina Van Tassel. The young woman seemed to sway toward him. Surely, that was approval in, in her eyes. Ichabod's heart fluttered. Katrina would not be the first, would not be the first young woman to swoon when she heard him sing. Let's add this event to our chart. How would you label it? I think I would say Ichabod tries to impress Katrina at church by singing. I use the word impress. <clears throat> I inferred it by the words the author chose. I'm going to add a bullet, add bullet points as I go. Please make sure you are doing the same. The author said, took pride in his voice. When you take pride in something, you think you're really good at it. Hmm. Ichabod sat close to Katrina's family. This is also another clue that he was trying to impress her. So I'm going to write that. So write that on your chart as well. <clears throat> I also noticed that the text said, all he saw was Katrina Van Tassel. That means he is watching Katrina as he sings. So we need to add that to our chart as well. All he saw was Katrina. The way Katrina is acting makes me think I know how she feels about Ichabod. The young woman seemed to sway toward him. Surely, that was approval in her eyes. What do you think? Can you infer how she feels? She is swaying towards him or moving closer to him, and he mentions a look in her eyes, in her eyes, so she must be looking at him. Because I know those things usually mean that someone likes you, I think Katrina might like him. We will have to find out. But let's add Katrina sways toward him to our chart. Brunk is in the church. Let's see what he thinks about Ichabod's singing. A snort came from the back of the church. Ichabod turned to see Brum Bones and his gang. Brum's eyes were narrowed. The muscles in his jaw, jutting jaw twitched. I must move my plan forward quickly, Ichabod muttered to himself, before the buffoon puzzles things together in his pea-sized brain. How does Brum react? Again, I'm going to have to infer here. Brum snorted, his eyes narrowed, and his jaw twitched. <clears throat> because I know that all these things can mean upset or angry, I can infer that Brum is angry. Let's add those to the chart. Brum angry. Snorted, eyes narrowed, jaw twitched. When the service ended, 
Ichabod wormed his way close to Katrina. He gave her father a stiff bow, then offered her his arm. May I? She glanced toward the back of the church as if searching for someone. Then she tucked her gloved hand into the crook of Ichabod's arm. Outside, Brumbone was already cinching or tightening the straps of his saddle. Brum, Katrina waved her free hand. Free hand, have you met the new school teacher? In answer, Brum hoisted himself into the saddle and walked daredevil toward them. I have not, Brum said, but his flapping coattails looked familiar. His dark eyes sparkled. He crept up Ichabod's thin neck and flushed his hollow cheeks. Katrina shook her head at Brum. How rude. Come, Mr. Crane, let us leave Mr. Van Root to chase coattails. Hmm. What are the important details about the church event here? I heard that Ichabod escorted Katrina from the church. Let's add that to our chart. <clears throat> when outside, Katrina yells for Brum. What can you infer about this? I'm not just sure yet. It could be a couple of things. Either Katrina wants Brum to meet Ichabod or see her with Ichabod. I think our chart we will have to add Katrina calls for Brum. Before we read on, I noticed some of the mentionings of coattails again. Let's reread. In answer, Brum hoisted himself into the saddle and walked daredevil toward them. I have not, Brum said, but his flapping coattails look familiar. Ichabod, I'm, I'm sorry, Katrina shook her head at Brum. How rude. Come, Mr. Crane, let us leave Mr. Van Brute to chase coattails. Why would Brum say Ichabod's coattails look familiar? Remember when Ichabod was in the woods and was met by a horseman? It makes me think that the horseman that scared Ichabod might be Brum because coattails are the bottom back of a coat. Brum is saying he recognizes Ichabod's coattails due to only seeing him from the back when he was running. On my chart, I added Brum mentions coattails. A few days later, a young boy arrived at the schoolhouse. Sir, the boy gasped, you have an invite. He gulped a breath from former Van Tussle, and he held out an envelope with a shaking hand. Well, well, Ichabod took the envelope and shooed the boy out on his way. Inside, he found an invitation to a party to be held that very night at Van Tussle's estate. He grabbed his hat stuck his two long limbs into the sleeves of his Greek coat and sent his students home early. Exciting, we have a new event. We must add that to our chart. How would you describe what just happened? Very good, I think I'll write. Ichabod receives invitation to Van Tassel's party. As we read, think about the details that happen to add as bullets under this. Ichabod Crane spent the next hour grooming. He slicked down his thin hair, he chewed fresh peppermint leaves to freshen his breath, and he brushed his dusty black suit. He even borrowed a broken down plow horse from, from former Van Ripper. His name is Gunpowder, the former said. The old fellow once had quite a spark in him. Ichabod galloped away as proud as a knight on a quest. It was a fine autumn afternoon. Wild ducks flew overhead. Birds filtered from bush to bush and tree to tree. 
Ichabod bobbled along past groves of ripe red apples. He passed fields of yellow Indian corn and orange pumpkins. His twitching nose smelled honey in the hives and fragrant buckwheat. He dreamed of stacks of pancakes made by the sweet white hands of Katrina Van Tassel. If his plan went well, by the end of the evening, Katrina and her father's fields would be his. <clears throat> the author used the words grooming to describe what Ichabod is doing. I'm going to reread to see if we can determine the meaning of grooming. Ichabod Crane spent the next hour grooming. He slicked down his thin hair, he chewed fresh peppermint leaves to freshen his breath, and he brushed his dusty black suit. What do you think it means? Because it talks about ways Ichabod is getting ready, slicking his hair, freshening his breath, and brushing his suit, I think grooming means getting yourself ready. We should add that to the chart. Ichabod groomed himself. The text gives us information about how Ichabod is feeling as he makes his way to the party. He dreamed of stacks of pancakes made by the sweet white hands of Katrina Van Tassel. If his plan went well by the end of the evening, Katrina and her father's fields would be his. How would you say what happened here? I agree. Ichabod is already thinking of the future with Katrina because he's imagining her making an making pancakes, and him owning the fields. Wow, let's get into our guided practice. Look at all the notes we captured about today's events on our chart. We have thought deeply about how the author is providing us with details about the events in the story. I'm anxious to describe these events by using the details about the events. Just like in the first two lessons, we're going to write an explanatory paragraph. However, in today's paragraph, we are focused on the events. In lesson one, we focus on setting, and in lesson two, we focus on the characters. Think about how the author, Kim Griswold, described the events in The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. We will start together, and you will finish it on your own after the lesson. Let's look back at the event chart. Do you see a way we might organize the information from today's events in this part of the story, in today's parts of the story? Do you see how we might group our thoughts? Go ahead and jot some ideas down in the margin about how they might be grouped. Hmm, I notice because we have listed the events with bulleted details underneath, we have made it much easier on ourselves to write. I see we have three main events. Ichabod realizes Brum wants Katrina too. Ichabod tries to impress Katrina at church by singing, and Ichabod receives a party invitation. Now that we have considered our categories, I know one of the first things I need to do to write my paragraph is to write an introduction. Take a moment to try to craft an introduction from the prompt. Write an explanatory paragraph about how the author, Kim Griswell, describes the events in the story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow using details from the story. Say it out loud until you get it how you want it. We're going to work together to describe the first event using details we have captured. Then, you will finish the other three events on your own. Under this event in the story, Ichabod realizes Katrina, Ichabod realizes Brum wants Katrina. We have listed a few details to help us remember. Wanted father's land and thought, would get her, um, thought he would get it by marrying her. Now, let's turn these into complete thoughts. Take a minute and consider how you might get started. I'm going to start by taking the event and making it into a better sentence.
In the beginning of part three, Ichabod realized Brum Bones wanted Katrina too. Now let's add how, now let's add our details. How might you combine the details to make one good sentence? Say it out loud as you write it. Here's my sentence. Ichabod wants Katrina's father's land and he concluded he can get the land by marrying Katrina. I could have had two sentences with the details. Ichabod wanted Katrina's father land and he realized he could get the land by marrying Katrina. However, I thought I would make it better, a better sentence by creating a compound one. Now here's my entire section. In section three of Ichabod's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, as retold by Kim Griswell, the author presented three main events. Ichabod realized Brum wants Katrina too. Ichabod tries to impress Katrina at church by singing. And Ichabod received a party invitation. In the beginning of part three, Ichabod realized Brum Bones liked Katrina too. Ichabod wanted, to, wanted Katrina's father's land and he concluded he could get the land by marrying Katrina. Now it's your turn to write. I want to finish our paragraph by describing the other two events. Ichabod tries to impress Katrina at church by singing and Ichabod receives a party invitation. The chart you created with me about the events will be very helpful to use as an outline because we listed details from the text about each event. Don't forget to think about how you might transition between each of your explanations. Also, be sure to add a concluding sentence. Here's our task. Boys and girls, once again, I've enjoyed reading about the events in Section 3 of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow with you today. Thank you again for inviting me into your home, and I look forward to seeing you in our next lesson in Tennessee's At Home Learning Series. Bye.